If there's one thing that we can all agree on, it is that the Stanley tribute in this film was beautiful. What is up, Flick fans, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I am talking about the brand new film in the MCU, Captain Marvel. It's a film I am excited to talk to you guys about, share my thoughts, because that's what we do on YouTube. We share our thoughts in a calm and loving way. I see all the controversy going on online, and while I see some people's point of views and other point of views, I'm just like, yeah, it goes both ways, the people going on IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes giving it a 10 out of 10 before they see the movie. That's crap. Giving it a 1 out of 10 before they see the movie. That's crap. You have to see the film before you can judge it. And it goes both ways. There is a such thing as giving a movie too good of reviews if it does not deserve it. Guys, just judge the film on its own merits after you see it. That's all I'm going to talk about involving that. I want to talk about the actual film Captain Marvel because it is a movie that I was looking forward to, albeit the trailer and the marketing and really everything leading up to it did not get me excited. I saw the trailers and I thought Brie Larson as Captain Marvel just looked kind of meh. And it's sad because in a movie like Room and Short Term 12, she is fantastic. I wanted her to bring that energy to this role and that's what we're going to talk about today. If you guys don't know how my reviews work, I like to talk about the movie and then give you my score. Get down in the comments section, let me know. Are you going to see it tonight? Have you seen it? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Let me know in the comments section down below. I always appreciate you guys with the interaction and everything you all do. But let's talk about Captain Marvel. So Carol Danvers becomes one of the universe's most powerful heroes when the Earth is caught in the middle of a galactic war between two alien races. And like I said, I was excited for the movie because of what they have built up in the MCU, not because of the trailers, because they just did not hook me. And I wanted this film to deliver. I wanted it to be different. The one fear that I had going into Captain Marvel is that it was going to play it safe and go down a conventional route that at the end of the day just has me like, why could we have not just done something a bit bigger, a bit better? Maybe something that takes more risks. I love risk taking and filmmaking and I'm not saying every superhero movie has to do that, but with a superhero as powerful as they have claimed her to be as Captain Marvel, I wanted this to be that film. And unfortunately, if I'm judging it based on what I just said, it did not reach those levels. This film does play it safe. It doesn't have a plot or a story or character aspects that you have never seen before. It does all of the things and it follows all of the beats that you kind of expect it to follow. And because of that, I walked out of this movie a bit underwhelmed. And you're talking to a guy that loves superhero movies, and I'll admit sometimes I have my comic book loving hat on when I'm watching a film, and even if the movie is not the best thing in the world, I will still walk out going, you know what, I had fun, I had a good time. Because of that, I can say I enjoyed the movie. And there are elements of Captain Marvel that I really enjoyed. And before I get too negative, I want to hit on the things that I liked because there are elements of this film that really worked. Ben Mendelsohn's character was great. I didn't know what to expect because even though he plays a great villain because he is pretty much always the villain in his movies and he always does a good job. For some reason, I was going into this expecting him to be one of the weaker characters, but he was actually possibly one of the best parts about the film. He's zany, he's crazy, he's a bit wacky, but he embraces that and has so much fun playing this character. And I also like the route that they took with him and other characters in a similar fashion. I'm not going to say where it goes, how it goes, or what it does, but I'm just telling you guys that I really liked what they did with that aspect of the story. There are three or four aspects of the story that are all going in different directions in this movie. And I guess they expected it to not feel as jarring as it actually feels at times because they try to cram so many different elements, whether it's friendship or this mentorship or being out in space or being back on Earth and so many different plot elements at once. But at the end of the day, I really just wanted to focus on Carol Danvers and try to understand, try to see where she is coming from. And unfortunately, one of the problems problems that I ran into while watching this movie is that I just, I couldn't get a lot from Brie Larson as Captain Marvel as Carol Danvers and that's what I wanted going in because like I said, Brie Larson is super talented but she does not display her true talents in this movie as this character and I don't want to go as far to say miscasting for her because once again, I think she is great but she doesn't fit 
what I envisioned as Captain Marvel. And uh, just because you envision it doesn't mean that's how it needs to be. Y'all throwing some Last Jedi arguments at me. Okay, okay, I understand that. But then again, I at least wanted some more emotion displayed from her character. I just, I never gravitated towards her. And it really was disappointing in the entire movie. I was trying to put my finger on why am I not loving this as much as I wanted to love this? And looking back at the film, it could have been her performance. Now, I don't want to put all of the blame on her performance. It could have also been the direction. I think the true test to see which route we actually go down is to see what she does in Avengers Endgame because if she is really good in that movie, then I'm going to be like, oh, the Russo's direction. It worked in that film. The directors in this movie, they didn't give us everything we needed from the character, but if she is the same character in Endgame as she is in Captain Marvel, then unfortunately I have to blame that on the performance. A performance that I just, I didn't love. I'm not saying she's bad. There are moments where I'm saying, that is Captain Marvel. I want this, but I want this the entire movie. At this point in time, I am relating to her character, and I understand where she's coming from. But then it's gone, and we're back to the same old Carol Danvers that we are with the entire movie. And I just wanted more from those moments. Those moments that I have in my mind as this is Carol Danvers. Annette Bening was good, kind of wasted. Lee Pace is back as Ronan. His character literally could not have been in the movie and I would have been like, was he in the film? I don't remember. The two standouts for me other than Ben Mendelsohn, Samuel L. Jackson is so good in this role. First off, the de-aging technology. I don't know what they did or how they did it, but he looks absolutely phenomenal in this movie. My goodness. Clark Gregg as Agent Coulson, first off, when he popped up, even though he was in the trailer and I knew he was coming, it was still heartwarming to see him back on screen. His de-aging technology was not as good. I guess it's because they wanted to focus all the attention on Nick Fury. He looked great. And another character that I really loved, Lashana Lynch. Everything that happened at the location where they meet up, I don't even want to spoil where it is, it was so good. Her relationship with Carol. See, those were the moments when I looked at Brie Larson's performance and I said, this is something. I'm really loving this relationship that you're giving me. There were some very emotional, intense moments between the characters. My big issue with that storyline is it's just kind of jam-packed within all of this other stuff happening, and I didn't get enough. I wanted more because the emotion is there, the heart is there. I need more from that. And regardless of what you think about the movie, how cool is it that we are living in a time where these scrolls are a thing on screen, if you are a comic book lover or just a Marvel fan, then you know what the scrolls are, and I have always wanted to see them. I remember the rumors that came out when Avengers was coming out. Oh my gosh, are those aliens the scrolls? Turned out to be the Chitari, but now we have the scrolls, and it is really cool to see them on screen and to see what they do. I don't think they use the shape shifting ability enough in the movie, and I can't necessarily blame the movie for that because the plot does take it in a direction that didn't really warrant that as much as I anticipated, and I can count that as a surprise. I liked that story point and where that goes. I just thought the idea of the shape-shifting and they can turn into anybody that they want, I thought it was going to play a bigger role than it actually did. I don't want to say anything else. I will get into the rest in my spoiler review, but right now I'm saying I could have used more even though I enjoyed where that story element went. But all of this just kind of cycles back to the point that I made at the beginning of the review is that there is some really good stuff buried deep underneath this film that you can pull out and say that's a good performance, that's that's a good character, that's a good moment, but the movie that this film is wrapped in, it's not tied up in a neat little bow, it's just kind of somebody tied it all together and took tape and pasted it around and they gave you a present. It's still a present and I'm going to open it and probably enjoy what's inside, but it's not wrapped properly, it's kind of messy. I just feel kind of meh about the entire thing before I dig deep into it and that's kind of how I feel about this movie walking out. I look back upon it and I see really good things and really good characters, but at the end of the day, the final product, the package, it was just underwhelming. It plays it safe in almost every aspect you can, from the score to the script to the cinematography. It's all just something that we have seen before, and the stuff that we've seen before did it better. Feels like a phase one film, that's what I'll say, before Marvel really got the idea of, oh, we're gonna do different genres, we're gonna take these films and these sequels in different directions, and that's the hope that I have for the next Captain Marvel movie, because you know it's coming because it's gonna make a lot of money and whatnot. I want them to take this in a different direction, do something that we don't expect, because everything that I expected to happen in this film 
kind of happened. But I don't want to spoil anything in this review. I kept it kind of vague because of that. I will definitely dive deep into spoilers later on this weekend when I do that big long review and hopefully I'll have a special guest. But before then, I want you guys to get in this comment section and let me know all of the things that I mentioned before. But now I'm going to give my score the moment you guys have been waiting for. Is it a 1? Is it a 10? Because those are the only two options. You can't give it anything else. It's either a 1 or a 10 these days, right? At the end of the day, I'm going to give this film a 6. 68%. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this review. Get down in the description below to see where this ranks on my 2019 list and to see where it ranks in the MCU, tune in tomorrow night because that countdown, that list will be coming out. I am excited to update that along with some Netflix reviews, Doom Patrol, a lot of content coming at you this weekend. So many things dropping on Netflix. I can't wait to dive into all of that. And don't forget about the spoiler review that's coming as well. You guys are the absolute best and I will catch you very soon.